What a go on boys and girl. Welcome back to the channel. If you're new here, my name is Ryan and in today's video we're starting a brand new series. We're doing an addition here. Just some brick installation and sill installation. I want to walk you through the process of what we're about to do. And afterwards we're going to jump right into the video. Let's dive right into it. Okay guys, so what we are doing here, we're going right underneath the window. It's going to be sill. Go right to the end here. Here gonna go all the way up to the top of the window. We're gonna work our way. We're gonna make the return here underneath the window with the sill. Right at the corner there, the brick's gonna go all the way up to the top of the window. They are gonna go up to the top of the window. And over there, go up to the top of the window as well. Over here, we're gonna work our way go all the way up. I'm going to go up there right now and show you what that looks like. Okay, so over here, the bricks is going all the way up to the roof. We're just going to go right to the window there, come back around and then go up to the roof. So we're going to extend this window here, as you see. I already made my cutout earlier. Later on, we're going to tweet it. That's going to that's gonna be a separate video, so I'm gonna cut it out and tweet it. Install my angle line here. Come all the way over. So if you have a four feet window, you draw you go with like a four inches bearing. Once it's more than four feet, you go to eight inches bearing. So four inches bearing or eight inches bearing, meaning how much angle line you hang over to sit onto your, your bricks. That's gonna hold our hole as a support. So here we're gonna go with a control joint, go all the way up. It's gonna be a sill right here. Yeah, gonna jump into it now. All right, so we're gonna install some type X. We're gonna go with a soldier post hangover, maybe half an inch. We're gonna install some type X once I reach up to around here. Somewhere here, we're gonna put our weeping plastic. So we're gonna put our weeping plastic right on top of our you know what, I'm not even going to put the Tyvek yet. So I'm going to install one post of brick. And afterwards, we're going to put our weeping plastic right on top of here. One KV family, what's up? I have a question for you all. Why they always call us for all these problem jobs? Honestly, I don't mind because I'm a problem solver. I like problem and I like difficult job. I like jobs where I have to figure figure out how to solve it. I like jobs when I get home in the night before I go to sleep. I try to figure in my brain how am I gonna work around the problem tomorrow morning when I woke up and ready to go to work. But this one is huge. So this one here as you see right over here the carpenter messed up the wall itself. Come over if you see the block right beside me here the block the, the, the wall itself come over around two inches or maybe inch and a half so what I have to do here to help to solve the problem I step my brick over around three quarter of an inch I step my brick over okay guys so I put a 45 I cut a 45 for here I plumb up my brick put two line one at the top one at the bottom the same thing go all the way down here from the soldier course one line at the bottom one at the top now we're gonna run our soldier course go right through after we're gonna put our weeping plastic right on top of the line that way we can have our weeping hole right there as you see here because of the wall itself it's project over which the carpenter should step in the wall another two inches inward that way we could just come up with the existing brick wall that is already there right now so what i'm doing right now i'm actually just stepping over three quarter of an inch and then the, the brick that's going to go on top we're going to just step that over another quarter inch or maybe half an inch so that way we can have a one inch cavity space or maybe even a half an inch cavity space at the back of the wall because it's very important to have a breathing space at the back of the wall 
as we go in the video you're gonna see how we're gonna work that out to try and solve this huge problem and this piece of wall that I'm doing all the front all around is the same problem one six one side of the front is even worse to, than this side that I'm doing right now so stay tuned for when we finish this wall and we go to this, the, the front wall you're gonna see how, how terrible that is I don't know how they screwed up on this one and the homeowner for this job here is a is an engineer actually you know and he called me up and he said Ryan to be honest man you're the only guy who I I know who can figure or come up with a solution to fix this problem because one of the things that they were thinking is to pull down this wall and bring it back in two inch which the roof is already on it so it would be so difficult for them to pull it down um, and the homeowner don't want to have a stucco or a siding on this wall you want to have the bricks and as you see here we, we find a brick that is pretty close to the one that's already there that one is just a little bit thinner and it's a little bit thicker so that's why we have to do it separate from the existing one we can't tie it into the wall and you'll see later on how we're gonna join that up by putting some brick tie in there to embed it that way it's secure properly onto this new wall that we're we're building here right now but this one was very challenging it took me a few days actually when i came to look at it at first to figure out what the best solution i have and i can do to help you know to give this this client you know his, his wall because like i said for me personal i like problem jobs so you guys probably wondering all the time why ryan have so many problem jobs these are fun for me i enjoy doing them because my i can put my brain to work let's keep watching the video So here I'm just installing my weeping plastic. Once I install my weeping plastic, we're gonna install one course of brick. And after we install one course of brick, we're gonna put our Tyvek right on top. So every three bricks, we're gonna leave a hole right on top of this flush in here. So that once the water run, it's gonna run and it's gonna escape and come through just like this. That's gonna turn here so there's no water won't go in between the wall here. So every three brick or so we're gonna leave a old. You see as we go, keep on watching. So now we're just gonna lay one coastal brick right on top of the So installing my first brick, I'm gonna step over another quarter inch close to half an inch. That way we can achieve our one inch cavity space at the back of the wall. Like I said, if you work out to have half an inch to one inch cavity space, but you don't wanna have your brick sitting onto the wall. You know, you wanna have breathing space at the back of your wall. It's, it's very important. So as you see here you now we're building a lead right here and we're gonna go down at the, the other hand and build another lead so that way we can run our line straight through to make sure we have our band intact. Unfortunate I lost that section of the video guys but as you see in the video every three bricks we we'll leave a hole if you look down below there we have a hole those are our weeping hole 
and those all are for the purpose of if there is any water worth going in the back of the wall later on it will escape and it will come through those holes so it's very important to leave those holes every three bricks as you go now right on top of my soldier coast that's the first brick that will lay there I run one coastal brick on top of my soldier coast and I sew brick ties right across. So we have brick ties maybe like every 8 inches because we have the floor in there. So I lay one coast on top right where you see the weeping hole there on top of that coast. We lay brick ties. We install brick ties right, at, right along around 8 inches just so that we can sew that, that soldier coast into the, the flooring. That way we can use that as an extra support being as we have the, the, the three quarter of an inch hang over there so that way we can achieve our cavity onto our wall. So this is basically how I have to I have to do it in order to to get the cavity and trust me when this wall finish you're gonna see it looks beautiful. The reveal is a hundred percent straight underneath the bottom. When you see underneath the bottom where I, because I run the, the, the bottom line and I run the top line, all the bricks are straight in line 100% and it looks amazing. My client was away in, in China for a vacation and he came back and when he saw it, man, he was like, Ryan, man, I love it. Because he was wondering if, if I can pull it off because, you know, you know it's because of how much the wall stepped over. But um, you know, I'm I'm happy that I could work it out for him, and you know, everyone is happy, and it you know it, it came out really well. But guys, if you get involved from this video so far, um, go ahead and give it a thumbs up, and subscribe if you haven't already subscribed. That's all I ask from you for making these contents. Reason for that, I want the video to I want the more you like it, is the more it helps the algorithm to recognize the video. So we can share it as to as much youth as possible so that way they can watch and hopefully learn something. You know, we need more more trade men in the in the field. Right now, as I speak, I need brick players and it's so hard because most of these young guys who are leaving college and university nowadays, they don't want to come into the trade. You know, so let's spread it and show them that you can make good money from it. You know, you can make up to 50, 60 bucks an hour doing these jobs even more so share the videos so that way they can come and i'm always open to teach them as well